Jesus said in Luke 17, 1, It is impossible, but that offenses shall come, but woe to him through whom they come. There's one area you'll never be able to stop from coming into your life, and that is the opportunity to be offended. You are going to be offended or at least be tempted to be offended, and so will everyone else around you. And it is those offense that end up destroying relationships. That's what happened with Judas Iscariot. He got offended in Jesus, and as a result, he betrayed him. Read the scriptures. When Jesus rebuked him for correcting the woman who poured perfume on Jesus' body, uh, he, he went to betray Christ. That rebuke, that correction was enough to make him offended. And some of you, you've gotten offended because your pastor's corrected you, your husband and wife has corrected you, your boss has corrected you, uh, and you don't like it. And so you're like Judas Iscariot. You go on and do your own thing because you are offended. Listen, you got to get rid of the offense because according to Paul in 2 Timothy chapter 2, it's the trap of Satan. And some of you are trapped in offense. You have such animosity, terrible thoughts toward people, and yet those people haven't done very much wrong to you. But you perceive it because that's what you're doing. You're letting the devil work on your mind to get you offended in people. Solomon writes in Proverbs 18, 19, An offended brother is more unyielding than a fortified city, and disputes are like the barred gates of a citadel. What is he saying here? When a brother or sister is offended, it's hard to win them over. It's going to take a lot. So friend, I want to talk to you about what to do when you or someone you care about is offended. How do you get one over? How do you win people over? Well, first, it's not going to be easy, but it can be done. Solomon offers some pointers on how to settle disputes and how to get people on your side. He says in Proverbs 18, 19, a hot-tempered man stirs up dissension, but a patient man calms a quarrel. I think the first thing you need to do is be, don't let anger get the best of you. Don't burst out in anger. Be patient. And a lot of times when someone says something to you that hurts your feelings, stop. Don't reply back right away. Think about it because you need to, you need to quit reacting so quickly over what people do, you got to be patient. you got to avoid that anger. Second thing that Solomon says, Proverbs 15, 1, a gentle answer turns away wrath, but harsh words stir up anger. Don't use harsh words. Don't call people names. You understand? Don't, don't stir up that anger. You, you, don't, you, you can tell someone you disagree and you feel that, that they're wrong, but you don't have to say you're a dummy, you're an idiot. You're a hypocrite. You're going to hell. Come on. Don't use words like that. You'll never win anyone over by that harsh talk. And then Proverbs 25, 8. Do not go forth hastily to strive. you got to stop impulsive reaction. And that's sort of what I've talked about before is don't act so quickly. Be patient. And sometimes you just got to overlook some of the offenses. Husband, wife, you don't have to react every time your spouse says something or does something that you don't like. Solomon writes, Proverbs 19, 11, a man's wisdom gives him patience and it is to his glory to overlook an offense. Sometimes the best thing to do is overlook it. Sometimes I have to do that with my members. They'll say something or do something, but I don't have to handle or talk about everything that they said or did that could be offensive to me. God says it's just better to overlook it because then I'm just going to stir up anger and most of the people will regret the things they've said and done. And then one last thing, Proverbs 26, 17. Like one who sees a dog by the ears is a passerby who meddles in a quarrel not his own. Listen, don't get dragged into people's disputes. Don't be at church and you see two people talking. Maybe they look like they're a little arguing. Don't jump in and say, What's going on? Can I help? You cannot help. All you're going to do is get those people angry at you. And he, and he says it's like taking a dog by the ears. Look, I don't recommend grabbing a dog by the ears, but you can kind of imagine what's going to happen. The dog's going to try to bite you, and you're not going to be able to let go, because if you let go, he's going to bite you. And these people are going to turn on you when you start meddling 
in their affairs. I hate it when someone says, Bishop, you know, we have a problem right here. Can you fix this? We're, we're, oh man, I hate that because almost always people are going to get upset. And Solomon is saying, all you're doing is creating that kind of anger. So friend, are you offended? Are you trying to win offended people? Then recognize this, that if you're trying to win people, oh, first, if you're offended, get rid of the offense. Be bigger than that. Quit acting like Judas Iscariot. Peter got criticized by Jesus all the time, yet he didn't get offended. He, he learned by it. Don't, don't get offended because people in authority have corrected you. Be bigger than that. And then finally, do your best to win offended people, but recognize this. You can't always win them over. Paul writes in Romans chapter 12, if it is verse 18, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. I like the fact that he says, if it's possible. In other words, he's admitting that it's not always possible to be at peace. But he says this, as far as it depends on you. What is he saying? You cannot be the offended brother or sister. If they're offended and you're trying to win them over and they cannot be won over, then that's up to them. And what he's saying is, it cannot be your fault that you're the one that's offended. Because in the end, it's your fault that there's no unity because you won't let go of the offense. Friend, are you offended? Let it go.